Hello, do you got questions on long-term prepping for food storage and supplies? Well, in this video here, I'm gonna give you some great ideas on how to do that. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. My name is Charles, and today we're gonna to be talking about prepping for long-term food storage and supplies that you need. I'm gonna give you some tips and some tricks on how to uh, go about doing this and try to save you some money along the way. Um, like I said, my channel is for the beginners. Um, this may be for a little bit more of the intermediate people that have already started prepping, but okay, wanna se secure some more food supplies for a long-term uh, scenario. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing you want to do is is you want to learn how to uh, use and utilize um, and feel comfortable with starting to use your Mylar bags with oxygen absorbers, um, your vacuum sealers, um, your canning products, um, and dehydration, you know, your dehydrators. Um, so let's cover those real quick. Um, your Marlar bags and stuff, you know, you, you can go online, you can find quite a few sites that give you quite a bit of information on those. Uh, the government does have a website on uh, uh, storing food long term with uh, the Marlar bags with oxygen absorbers and it breaks it down and tells you for what you're putting into your bag, how big the bag is, how many oxygen absorbers you have to put in there, and what products you don't have to put an oxygen absorber in. Um, they're very well um, constructed. Uh, you want to buy, you know, some decent ones. Don't buy them, you know, uh, from a mom and pop store. Buy them. I get all mine off Amazon. Uh, you usually can get really good deals. Um, but you want to, you know, you got to get the air out and. You know, the way you can seal them, yes, you can buy a, a sealer for it if you would like to spend the money for it. An iron works just great. I've done videos on that, and you can go back and watch those videos. That's how I seal all my bags. I use an iron with a, a piece of wood, two by four, whatever, and it works perfect. Um, canning. Um, you know, a lot of people, they don't know a lot about canning. So if you wanted to get into canning, uh, you know, there's things that you have to buy to utilize that to make sure that uh, you're sealing your products good, you're sterilizing everything, um, and there are books, there's videos, there's all kinds of things that you can watch on that, either on YouTube, you can get books off Amazon, and they can walk you right through and tell you what you, you need um, for your canning part of your long-term preps for food. Uh, vacuum sealing. Vacuum sealing comes in really handy with a lot of dry goods. Um, we have just recently purchased a, a vacuum sealer and um, I love it. This thing is great. I mean, uh, especially if you're freezing meats and things like that. Uh, if you make uh, um, uh, extra, uh, like I'll give you for instance, like macaroni and cheese. You make a big you know, thing of macaroni and cheese and you had a bunch left over. Well, you can divide that up into your next meals, okay, if there's enough for two more meals for you and your family, and you can put them in your vacuum sealer and freeze it. Well, when you get ready to, to cook it, all you have to do is pull that out and drop it into a pot of hot boiling water, and uh, five, 10 minutes, it's done. You pull it out, cut it open, pull it, and pour it in a bowl, and voila, dinner's served. Um, but a vacuum sealer comes in handy with rice and beans and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's another way that you could you could take and utilize that. Um, that would also go into with uh, if you're going to dehydrate food. Um, that is something that I'm going to be getting into. Uh, I have ordered one, uh, but with the delayed shipping that is going on right now with Amazon, I'm not expecting that until the end of April. Um, but I want to start dehydrating fruits and vegetables because uh, if you de dehydrate the vegetables and you can seal them, so I can either put them in the, the vacuum sealer and seal them that way, or I can do them in a Marlar bag and seal them that way. 
um, they will last up to 10 years. I've already been doing some research on some of this stuff. Your sugary products, um, those will only last up to about five years. So, you know, but still, and they take up little or no room. Um, and you're using fresh fruits and vegetables. That's a big thing, you know, because a lot of people don't like canned stuff, but for long-term food storage, you know, canned goods are, you know, usually good out uh, two to four years, uh, depending on the product, and then they are still good after that. You just have to maintain those products and make sure, like, you know, they're not dented, bulging, rusting, that type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> you want to do what you're comfortable doing when you're starting to do your long-term food storage. Um, if, you're comf if you're not comfortable, say, canning and stuff, like if you're canning and you gotta do the pressure cooker and put everything in there and you're not comfortable doing that, then I wouldn't suggest that you do that. Look at the other areas and the other opportunities that you have in front of you that you can do with minimal, um, let's say, risk. Um, because there, there are several different, you know, ways that you can do this based on your budget. You know, I mean, everything, everything you do is based around your budget. So if you can only do just a little bit each month, it all starts to add up over time. Trust me, you know, um, if you're going to, um, if you're going to get into your long term food storage and supplies, uh, it would probably be very beneficial for you if you live in an area where you have a Sam's Club, a BJ's, Costco, any type of a bulk warehouse, because I know some areas have, you know, their own little bulk warehouses, or you may know some place that sells uh, um, bulk, um, but anywhere you can buy it in bulk, you're going to save a ton of money and for your for your product that you're buying. Um, you want to make sure when you're you're buying in bulk, um, some some good ingredients to have on hand that'll last forever, which is a proven known fact. If anybody knows anything about history, um, honey and syrup. Now the syrup has to be 100% maple syrup now if you can't find that in your stores i would suggest go online and research from vermont uh maple farms and uh there'll probably be a whole list if you google them there'll probably be a whole list of them come up that you can order from because all their products that come out of that state is a hundred percent pure maple syrup and you're basically helping out the little guy you're taking out the middleman because um, for what they sell like a little gallon in the grocery store you know a little not even a gallon a quarter gallon a little jug you know you throw in another 10 bucks and you can get a gallon when you buy it right from these guys so there's a tip for you to save you some money honey you can buy honey if you go to these uh, um, Sam's, Costco, BJ's and stuff, you can get it in the great big huge jars. Uh, honey will last forever. They found honey in the um, Egyptians, you know? I mean, honey is, you know, if it starts to crystallize on you, you know, you can warm a, warm a jar up in some warm water and it'll decrystallize and it's good to go. It's just a give me. You wanna make sure that you, you're looking at your, for long, your long term food storage your rice, your beans, beans of all kinds, you know, flour, sugar, salt of all kinds. You know, you want kosher salt, you want iodized salt, you want regular salt. Uh, those are the three that store the, the best. Uh, your Like your pink Himalayan salt and all that, it doesn't last as long even when you do put it into a Marlar bag or something and try to store it that way or vacuum seal it. It just doesn't hold its, it re, you know, the retention of the, the salt. Um, you're going to need yeast, you're going to need uh, cornstarch baking soda, um, you know, th this way here if you need to make uh, pancakes, you want to make bread, you want to make muffins, throw some oatmeal in there, you know, buy it in bulk. Um, you know, I mean, there's tons of ways you can do this. Now, when you're buying all this stuff in bulk, you got to have some place to put this. Now, you can get five-gallon uh, Mylar bags, 
buy uh, five gallon uh, plastic buckets. You can get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, they don't have to be the food grade if you don't want the food grade because they're gonna be inside of the bag. So you can buy their buckets, which are usually like two, three bucks a piece, get your lid and you can put them right in there and you can put, uh, you know, 25 pounds of rice will fit into a five gallon bucket uh, very easily. Uh, then you have to figure out how many oxygen absorbers you need to put in there. And I would also, with your rice, a uh, good tip is if you're not able to freeze your rice for 48 to 72 hours before you package it, because that kills off the bugs and the eggs, um, buy yourself some bay leaves from the grocery store, Walmart, wherever, and throw in three or four bay leaves in there. And the bay leaves actually, the the scent of the bay leaves kills off the eggs and any little bugs that you can't see. They're, they're always in there. Um, <clears throat> you wanna make sure you have all different types of your paper goods. Um, we're not even gonna mention one because we all know what that is, don't we? I hope so. Um, but you wanna look at uh, your um, paper towels, you wanna look at paper plates, maybe some you know, plastic cups, plastic silverware, um, that type of stuff, uh, because you don't know in the long term if something happens and you don't have uh, water uh, that's constantly running through the pipes anymore um, because of if the grid went down or if they had to shut it down for some reason, a pipe burst and you know, um, this way you don't have to worry about cleaning as much and um, take some of the stress away on that. Um, you also want to try to get uh, baby wipes. Now baby wipes are good for babies, you know, you, you want to have extra diapers on hand too. You know, if you have a baby, you know, you always got to have, you know, I'd always keep an extra carton of diapers just in emergency case. But baby wipes are good more than just for babies. If you don't have running water for whatever reason it could be, you can use baby wipes to do basically a sponge bath. And you can clean yourself and, you know, all those different, you know, certain quote, private areas and uh, keep yourself clean. And because hygiene at that point would be uh, very high up on the list. You want uh, bar soap. Uh, I wouldn't store liquid soap in long term because it will tend to break down or um, it could freeze or if it's in heat or something, um, I don't think it's going to last as long. Bar soap is just by far the, the best way to go. It's going to last as long as you keep it um, out of uh, any moisture. You want to have your Clorox wipes, your cleaning supplies, um, ways to store water, purify water. Um, so you, you can buy like five gallon, 10 gallon jugs at certain different stores, Walmart, Target, you know, go to the camping section, you know, some of them, they might even look like gas tanks, but you can store water in them because they haven't put gas in it yet. But obviously, if gas has been put into it, do not use it for water storage. Now it is a gas can. Um, but you can store water in that. Uh, save your empty Milk jugs, rinse them out really well. If you buy gallons of milk, you can save those up and then if an emergency is starting to come around, you pre-fill those. That's what I do for hurricanes. I pre-fill those and then that way I make sure that I have you know an extra, I have six on hand constantly I keep here and then I got an extra six gallons on top of the water I already have in my house and I have two uh, five gallon um, water containers um, got them from the camping section in Walmart. Um, I've had them for quite a few years now, um, but those work great too. You can fill them up, you can set them in, out of the way, and then you, you have that water there. Now, if you live by a um, retention pond, a pond, a lake, a stream, or whatever else, you know, make sure that you always have a five gallon bucket just on the chance and turn the water off because you can't flush the toilet. So but what you can do is you can go out to the water source that you do have and you can get that in the water, bring that back, and then as you go to the bathroom, you can use the water from that to flush it 
and to get it go down so you're not dealing with uh, the hazardous part of um, disposal, if you know what I mean. Um, your oils, uh, your Crisco's, your lard and that kind of stuff, you want to get it the the, the uh, uh, the big stores where you buy your bulk and stuff because you can buy it in bigger bulk and you're saving yourself money. Um, canola oil I know will last for quite a long time. Um, uh, Crisco, I think it has a two to four year shelf life and lard has a seven year shelf life if stored in a cool, dry and dark place. Just remember that. Um, one of the big things is for your long-term um, food storage and supplies, now we're talking long-term, um, you want to have a major first aid kit. You want to spend time on building this. Um, you can buy some of these kits online. I'm going to tell you right now, uh, they will set you back two to three hundred dollars. They are very expensive, but if you, if you start and you start adding into your supplies, um, you can go on there and uh, you can do a little cheat because usually you could zoom in and you can see what they put in those, you know, in those kits. And you can take a, like a snapshot of it and then you have all that that they put in there and then you can start shopping around to your different places with somebody place runs something on sale, Walgreens, CVS, uh, Walmart, Tar whoever, you know, if they have sales, you have coupons for something or whatever, you know, um, and start building your own kit with what they have off their kit there. This way here, you're getting a nice adequate supply and you want to make sure that you have a lot of basics covered in case of an emergency where nobody can get to you. So you want to make sure that you really spend time that you'll spend probably a little bit of money on. But I believe if you used your head and shopped around, you can probably build a kit a lot less than what they sell them for online. Um, pet food. Pet food is probably the one that a lot of people sometimes just tend not to really think about. You know, um, when the shit hits the fan, they, they, you know, they're thinking about their family and family only. And then the next thing you know, the poor dog and cat don't have food. Um, I would suggest that you always keep, um, you know, extra food in your home. Get a five gallon bucket or whatever, or two five gallon buckets, you know, it depends on the size of your animal. You know, if you got a Great Dane, well, you're probably gonna need four because those suckers are gonna eat probably 50 pounds of dog food a week. But you see where I'm going with this, you know, store that and rotate it and use it, you know? And you know, when you, when you finish with one bucket, you know, then fill it up with another bag or whatever you need to do. The same with your cat food, your cat litter. Um, you know, make sure that, you know, if you have animals, make sure that you have treats and stuff for them. You know, animals get stressed out just like people do. They can sense more uh, stress in people than what we can sense in people. You know, their sense is just, you know, it's right up there, the top notch. You know, they know when people are sad. They know when people are happy. You know, they, they know all that. Um, so if you got treats and stuff for them to try to keep them calm down and everything else and any meds that you can um, possibly stockpile depending on what the, the meds are um, you know if it was for you know your your stuff for worms and and that type of stuff you may be able to get extra of that uh, your front line uh, for ticks and fleas um, all that kind of stuff if it's special medicine you probably will not be able to get you know a year supply or something uh, along that line um, but it's just something to try to do as much as you can for your pets um, in that that is basically um, to give you guys some great ideas on prepping for your long-term uh, food storage 30 days or plus um, and your supplies. Um, there's probably a lot more stuff that I could cover under this, but we could sit here and talk for an hour and a half, two hours on this subject, and nobody out here would watch the video because it's so long. Um, but if you do any have any tips, 
any comments, uh, especially if you got tips, please put them in there so everybody in the community can see these tips and hopefully, you know, uh, use them. You know, that's what this is all about. We're, we're here to try to get you um, everybody on the same page and working towards the same goal, you know. And once again, you know, all these ideas and stuff, this is all my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people out there, uh, you know, you have your own way of doing things. You have your own way that you like to prep and the things that you like to prep, um, which is great. As long as you're prepping, that's all that really matters. So on that note, my name is Charles. This is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.